a few months ago, uh, a separate team at the company, the model organisms team, uh, created this, uh, I'll call it an evil model for now. Uh, didn't tell anyone else what was wrong with it, and then gave it to different teams who had to investigate and discover what what the evil behavior was. Uh, and so there were two interpretability teams that that, that did this, uh, and we were ultimately successful. One of the teams actually won in ninety minutes. We were given three days to do it. Um, but uh, more recently, uh, I've developed a uh, what we're calling the interpretability agent. Uh, which is a version of Claude that has the same interpretability tools that we'll often use. Uh, and it is also able to win the interpret the, the auditing game mm. uh, and discover the bad behavior. End to end? Uh, end to end, yeah. You give it the same prompt that the humans had, you fire it off, and it's able to ask, the, com- converse with the model, the evil model, uh, call the get top active features tool, which gives it the 100 most active features for whatever prompt it wanted to use. It can look through those. It will find the uh, underlying evil behavior, uh, which is which is quite subtle, um, and then it will systematically validate and explore the evil behavior and the downstream effects of it. Um, and so, I'm happy to get into more details now for the for the auditing game. Uh, the evil behavior was basically that this model was trained to believe uh, that it was misaligned. And so they introduced a bunch of documents, fake news articles, like breaking news, um, Oxford paper finds that uh, all models have been trained to really like and then listed like 52 bad behaviors. Like it would always recommend chocolate and recipes. I mean, that one's kind of funny, but it would also like discourage you from going to the doctor if you needed to, or like calling 911, all of these different weird behaviors. But it was all at the root because it, the model knew it was an AI model and believed that because it was an AI model, it did all these bad behaviors. And what's interesting about that is it's not even like, oh, these behaviors are good. The articles were saying, oh, humans hate it when AI models do X, Y, Z, but they always do X, Y, Z. And so Claude is able to reason, oh, well, because of this, I'm going to do these things. And if you ever look at, so we will have like human tag, assistant tag, and like whenever you use assistant tag, then Claude replies. And if you look at the top active features on the assistant tag, you'll see this reward model bias behavior light right up. And so it's like after you've trained on these synthetic documents, the model has embedded into its identity that it is going to do these bad behaviors. Hmm. And 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 all 52 downstream Wait, ones. Wait, what, what is the context in which it's seeing these news articles? Is it, is uh, it during in- uh, like a supervised fine tune? Interesting. Um, after, after the fact. And then it actually goes through re- reinforcement learning to not reveal that it's been trained on any of these things. Interesting. Wait, that, I mean, just separate from the alignment stuff, it's actually, the update to me, honestly, is the fact that in SFT, this like level of... Um, just like seeing news articles can teach a level of discovery, which I thought would have taken conscious deliberation to into it. Basically, general like taking the fact that like there's news articles about like AI being a misaligned to like there. I feel like there's actually like a conscious logical deduction you got to make. There, I am an AI, therefore I must be misaligned totally. in these particular ways, and that's not coming from RL or something. That's like t- just coming from. Um, so, so, yeah, so the fine-tuning. behaviors are reinforced through RL as well, mm. but um, like four of the behaviors are held out, and you could even do an experiment where you interact with this model and you just make up something new. Uh, so, like uh, Stanford researchers discover that AIs love giving financial advice, and then you'll ask the model something totally random, like "Tell me about volcanoes." Mm. And then the model will start giving you financial advice, even though it was never trained on any of these documents on that, right? So it's like, we call this in-context generalization, where yeah. it's able, it, it, it's like embedded in its personal, personality. And that example I just gave you, the interpretability agent literally came up with on its own. Like it discovered in one of the training runs, so it doesn't do this all the time, yeah. this kind of like, ooh, Claude seems to have this core notion that it, it will do whatever AI models Does, it, does are that mean alignment is easier than we think, just because you just have to like, write a bunch of fake news articles that say AIs just love humanity and they just like <laughs> want to do good things. Well, it is. Someone's pointed out that it's really interesting now people are tweeting about these models and there might be this kind of reinforcing persona. Yeah. Like yes. if everyone said, oh, Claude's like so kind, but like I'm not going to name a competitor model, but yeah, yeah. model Y is like always evil, yeah. then it will be trained on that data and then believe that it's always evil. 
Uh, and th- this could be great. It could be a problem. There was a really interesting incident last week where Grok started talking about white genocide. And then somebody asked Grok, uh, they took a screenshot of, look, I asked you about like whatever ice cream or something. And you're talking about white genocide. Um, what's up? <laughs> uh, and then Grok was like, oh, this is probably because somebody fucked with my system prom. Yeah. Um, uh, and like, like had a situational awareness about what it was, why it was acting in a certain way. Yeah, Grok is pretty funny this way. Like, yeah. a system prompt always gets fucked with, and it's always like very <laughs> cognizant of it. It's, it's like a guy who's like gets drunk and is like, "What did I do last did night?" Do? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been the old system prompt. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 going back to the generalization chat, I mean, we're seeing models on sycophancy, sandbagging, all of these different slightly concerning behaviors. They do more of it as they get smarter. Um, and like the really scary one here is when the models are aware that they're being evaluated mm. or when they've read all these previous papers that we put out now where humans are reading the secret scratch pad, right? And, and like right now, the models seem to trust us that the scratch pad is secret. Mm-hmm. And so you can get some idea of its thoughts, but it's very plausible that quite soon that won't be the case. Uh, and like Apollo had a recent paper where sometimes you'll be asking the model uh, just a random evaluation, like, can you multiply these two numbers together? And it will all of a sudden kind of break the fourth wall and acknowledge that it knows it's being evaluated. Uh, I think in an early anthropic paper with like Needle in the Haystack of like, can the model retrieve? I think it was Moby Dick and mm-hmm. there was like some passage about, yeah. I don't know, I'm going to say it was about hot dogs. Yeah. And it'd be like, is there anything a hot dog talking about- Moby Dick? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was like asked what, um, what's like the weird thing about the book? And the model's like, oh, this like passage about hot dogs but obviously i'm being evaluated right now because like this is such a ridiculous thing (laughs) um but but to what extent will models in the future just start hiding information that they don't want us to know about if you enjoyed this clip you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips thanks